Cheering time. Praise him when the sun goes down. Love him in the morning. Love him in the noontime. Love him when the sun goes down. Jesus in the morning, Jesus in the noontime, Jesus when the sun goes down. Give a lot of who would take my cross to Calvary, pay the price for all my guilty. Who would care that much about me? Let me tell you about my Jesus. Oh, oh, he makes a way where there ain't no way. know what you're dealing with, but I do know there are battles being fought right now in this room. Can we fight them together? If you're not having a battle right now, the person next to you might be. Let's stand in the gap for them. Let's fight our battles together. And this is how we fight my battles. This is how we fight my battles.
um, so this year we're talking about obviously being propelled. Uh, that uh, again with the um, with the bracelets we have propelled. If you haven't seen them yet, it says propelled Luke five four, and it has uh, the uh, Calvary's uh, symbol on it and the website. So if you if you can pick that up afterwards, it's a great ministry opportunity. But again, we're going to get that in, the, in just a little bit. But on the uh, on the bracelet. The reason why it's important, we're going to drill this almost every single week. Uh, the, the bracelet itself, it says Luke 5.4. If we don't know Luke 5.4, that's a scary place to be. Oh, what does that mean? I don't know. But I like the bracelet. I was watching, uh, I was watching this uh, news, news article once. and uh, Not news article, but it was like a, a, it was apologetics, kind of a, kind of a, quick commercial kind of thing, and uh, this girl had a, had a tattoo, and it said Nahum 1-7, and so she was, they, they were asking her, what does that mean? I don't remember. <laughs> Come on, man. I mean, that's a ministry opportunity. It's like, if you have a, a verse on your body, if you have a cross of gold, if you're wearing a t-shirt that have a verse on it, here's an idea, use it. If you don't know what it means, like learn it and then wear it. So it's, it's important to do. So if you, if you see the screen, Luke 5.4, Luke 5.4 says this, When he stopped speaking, he said to Simon, also known as Peter, he said to Peter, he said to Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. Now that might not seem like a big deal to you, but if, if I could... Although I'm not, Pastor, Pastor Kevin in the last couple of weeks did a phenomenal job teaching this subject matter, teaching the context of this verse. I just want to spend a few moments on just this verse alone. When he had stopped speaking, what does that mean for us today? What is the so what, no, now what in that moment? Stay still. So what is the so what, now what in that statement? When he had stopped speaking... After he heard the word being preached, after he did his devotions, does does that make sense? When he had stopped speaking, after you have the Bible read to you, after you go through the service, that's what he's receiving. He's receiving the word. Well, what do you do after receiving the word? Do it. So what? Now what? Okay, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep. Go to your neighbor. Be aware of your coworkers. How do you minister to them? What opportunity do you have to minister the gospel to them? Bracelets, t-shirts, whatever the case may be. Stranger at a grocery store, whatever, whatever it is. Launch out into the deep. Do you remember when you were younger and you had to get your, I don't know, do you remember you, you, gotta, you were having to give a green light to go swim in the deep end of the pool. Do, do you remember taking those tests? The only way you could swim in the deep end, the only way you could use the diving board was what? You had to swim across, right? Once you swam across, you were certified to go jump. Is it, is that, do you remember that? So the reason why that's important is, listen, if you're in four foot of water, or 30 foot of water, and you're three foot, what's the difference? You can't reach anyways. There is something about, about swimming over in the deep end that's just scary, right? I don't know if you've ever done this. I don't know if you spent time in the Keys at all. We would go to the Keys from time to time when I was younger for our lobster season in, in July. And so we would go to some of these... Uh, some of these clear, clear, clear waters, and then next thing you know, you're swimming, and it seemed like you were going over an abyss. Look, I don't care how deep the water is. If I can see the ground, I feel okay. And then you get into this circle of nothingness. It's like, huh. I can't reach the floor anyways. There's something about the deep that's scary. Right? Am I the only one? There's something about going home. There's something about going to work. There's something about being at the grocery store. And the Holy Spirit says, that's the person I want you to talk to. Whoa, deep end. 
Is that making sense? Do you see how that winds up? Go to your coworkers. Go to the grocery store. Launch out into the deep where it's scary. And you watch what you catch. Let down your nets for a catch. Do you see what it means there? Turn your voice over to God. Look, you have no control who bites the hook. You have no control what gets into the nets. Your job is let down the nets. Your job is to throw the fishing pole. Right? It's not even in my notes. Man, that's preachable right there. That's good stuff right there. So you turn your voice over to God. You turn your smile. There's something about, like, when, 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 I, when I'm up here leading worship, when I'm part of the band, when I'm preaching a sermon, this is basic communication 101. The people that are focused on me and smiling all the time, I have a tendency of looking at them. The people that have a sourpuss on their face, I'll kind of, oh, I'm not going to look that way. <laughs> Sometimes I feel that there's three people in the room. I'm like, I'm just talking to you and you today. Right? I, there's something about the energy. When I see people smile, when I see people engaged, it, it, there's an energy about that. When I see people smiling in the grocery store of all places, I'm like, whoa. I remember not too long ago, Jen... Um, Jen's never been to uh, um, Aldi. You ever been to Aldi? It's a great experience. Um, so I was telling her about Aldi. I was like, no, you got to check, check out Aldi. You're, you're going to love it. So she went to Aldi. Next day she came back. I hate it. <laughs> it's horrible. They're mean. They're, 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 they throw my stuff around. I was like, yeah, but see, like, it's cheap and all. <laughs> so I'm trying to tell her, look, you are a Publix girl, Okay. When you go to Aldi, say goodbye to Publix. Okay, you pay for that. You want someone to kick your bags and nicely bring it to your car? Please don't tip me. I do this for the love. Aldi's like, get out. That's Aldi. But you pay for that too. Oh, you want organization on the shelves. Well, that's... That's an extra 10 bucks. Have you seen them stock? Aldi. That's a great ministry. When I go into Aldi and if I see a worker smile at me, it's like, what's wrong? Why are you, you're new. You're new here, aren't you? Right? There's something about when someone smiles at you, there's an energy. Smile at someone today. It's about having fun. Make sure you pick up a bracelet. It's, this, this is huge opportunity that when we pick up a bracelet, it's a ministry opportunity that you launch yourself into the deep, you let down your net, and you watch God move. Hey, what does that bracelet mean? That's a hook. Can you catch it? Are they biting? Are they nibbling? So the goal here is, uh, obviously, we want everybody to have a bracelet. We do. But pretty soon, I want you to get rid of your bracelet. There's something about, well, just take off your shirt and give it to the person, right? If someone likes your bracelet, here, you can have it. Come to church, get another one. Does that make sense? Don't covet this, like, no, this is my precious. This is mine. No, it's not. This is a ministry opportunity. If someone likes it, give it to them, okay? Does that make sense? We have more for you. If we run out, awesome, we have 300. If we run out, (laughs) we'll buy more. Go minister. Spread the gospel. All right, ready? So the memory verse of this month uh, is is Proverbs chapter 17, verse 22. You see it on the screen. Remember, this this is about having fun, right? Having fun this month. A merry heart does good. It's like medicine. But a broken spirit dries the bones. Let me read that again. A merry heart does good like medicine, but a broken spirit dries the bones. Man, there's something about having fun. It brings a smile to your face. There's a joy to it. There's an energy. You feel like conquering something. And then there are others like, no, I'm not in a good mood. I don't feel like 
going to church. I don't feel like smiling. The energy goes down and down and down. Do you ever see those massagers, the little gun thing? We bought that recently and because uh, I knew my, my kids are in sports a lot. Uh, my, my daughter plays a, a club that she did a, a four-game tournament yesterday in, in Miami. We got home at like 11 o'clock last night. I'm tired. So, uh, so we, we bought this gun knowing that she might be using this for her muscles. So I went to go look at it the other day, and it was dead. I charged it. So before we left, it was 100%. How many of us have a 100% charge five years ago? Remember that one time? Oh, man, it was awesome. You see, like, the energy goes away. It doesn't work anymore. You got to recharge it. Plug it back in. Recharge. Does, does that make sense? In the sheriff's office, they always teach, especially if you have a, a, a sheriff's office vehicle, they advise that don't fill up until it's empty. You wait until halfway and fill it up. So don't go past halfway. Fill that thing up again. Because you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know what's going on. You don't know when you're going to call it out. Keep that thing full. Okay, don't wait until you get flat to be like, man, I'm really getting hit hard. It's been about four weeks. It's been about six months before I, before, since I went to church. Maybe I should start going to church. Is, is this making sense? When you get charged, it's like, let's go. I'm ready. When I'm not charged, I'm like, yes, you go first. <laughs> I'm cheering you on. No, oh, man, like, charge it up. Charge it up and let's go do something. So what is fun? How is it defined? What's the definition of it? Fun literally means this, enjoyment, amusement, or lighthearted pleasure. Enjoyment, amusement, or lighthearted pleasure pleasure. So I wanted to have fun today, thus Jenga. I don't know if you know this. I like object lessons. I don't know if you got that memo. Um, but I, I got Jenga here, so I, I'm going to get some help. So Bob, if you could. All right, look, I know most of you guys know how to play this. But what I want to do is I want to kind of walk this game with you. Now, this is not our whole sermon, so don't, don't freak out here. Oh, great. What did you do today? We watched someone play Jenga. Uh, spiritual. Yeah, that's very spiritual. So what I want to do is, Bob, if you could give me, give me a 30-second lesson on what is Jenga and how do you play. Okay. It is a stack of wood blocks which are in a tower... And the object is to remove one of the blocks on each turn and without tipping it over or having it collapse, then you place it back on. And you try to create a very precarious tower so your opponent makes it tumble. Okay. Pretty good? All right. I, I'm, I'm with you. Okay. All right. So remember, what's the theme of the year? Propel. Thank you. Ten points to Bob, minus ten points for you guys. If the question was, what's the theme of the month, what's the series of the month, then it's have fun. Good job. You can be taught. You're slow, but you're worth waiting for. All right. So it's all about being propelled. So we want to propel ourselves, okay? We want to propel our attitude. We want to propel our worship. We want to prepare, uh, propel our, our prayer life to godly thinking. Propel, propel ourselves, okay? That's the object. Okay, so I'm going to show you how propelled and this verse and Jenga kind of, it meshes together. All right, so, so let's, let's, let's figure out who goes first. You want to do paper, rock, scissors? Paper, rock, scissors. All right, ready? Yep. One, two, three, shoot. Tag gum it. <laughs> or you can do elephant and mouse, too. Elephant and mouse. Elephant's that and mouse is this. And elephant's this. Nice. Anyway. All right, all right you already won. Yeah, okay. All right, you go first. Okay. All right, so, all right, so I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to try to pick his brain. So, Bob, before you officially do it, so I see, do you see what he's doing? So he's kind of looking at, walk me through out loud in the microphone to everybody else. What's your strategy? Before you grab one, what's your strategy? Okay, my strategy is I kind of poke at him a little bit. I don't know if that's with the rules or not, but I poke and I find the loose one. 
Okay, that time out. Lie. Just so you know, that's against the rules. Oh, is it? In Jenga, as soon as you touch one, that's it. All right? But, but we're just going to move forward, so he's poking right now, okay? So, okay, no more poking. No, you I mean, can poke. That's fine. Okay, that's poke. poke. I'm poke. All right. I'm going for this center one. Sorry. This one here. Poke in front of me. <laughs> All right, calm down. That was one. <laughs> so, now, so now it's my turn. Mm -hmm. so, so my strategy on this is I don't poke because I try to follow the rules. Right, right, right. So, but if we are poking, I do the same thing. What I do is I kind of look at it. Can I see light going through it? Ah, Does yeah, that make yeah, sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if I see these spotlights here, I'm actually going down, and I want to see if I can see spaces. Now, typically what happens, if he did the center, the outside here is... No bueno. Don't touch those two. If I do the outside, typically when I tap the outside, that means the center is tight. Does that make sense? So I see this is loose. So if this is loose, I'll let you know this is loose. Most likely, that was pretty tight. So I'm going to leave that one alone. All right, so this one's loose. And the rule is you can only use one hand. I can't, like, grab two hands. Oh. And you take it and you put it on top. That makes sense? I can't do this. It's one hand. One hand. Bunch of cheaters in this room. I feel it. I'm already. All right. All right. So, so that, that's happening. Bob, go ahead and do one more. All right. I'm going to try to make this very precarious right now. And I am going to poke. Ooh, I've already started. Now, I think the trick, what I found, it's like ripping a Band-Aid off. You oh, don't take dear. it slowly. Sometimes you just got to take the Band-Aid. That's impressive. That's impressive. All right, so let me, let me pause there. <laughs> let me pause there. Okay, so... <laughs> if I could... Um, Tim, would you mind? Could you take over from my spot? Oh. If you could start playing, just gradually start playing. I'm not going to trick you, no questions, nothing like that. So if you can start taking my spot, but I do want to ask you the same question that I asked Bob. So as you're walking up on this, talk to me out loud. If you grab the mic, talk to me out loud. What are you thinking? What's your strategy on the next move? Not to let it fall. Not to let it fall. <laughs> That's important. That's important. So what are you looking at? What are you, what are you, what are you well, seeing? I've been, I've been listening to what you've been saying. Okay. I'm looking for the light. I see the light right there. How many times do I get to tap it? <laughs> I'm a cheater, sorry. That one's not going to move. No guts, no glory, right? All right, that's good. All right, if you guys want to go back and forth for a few times, and then okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of continue this. Okay. All right, so, so if I could just allow you, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to encourage you. For some of us, we're going to have stuff set up throughout the, throughout the week, throughout the month. Um, uh, each Sunday. We're going to have activities again uh, in, in the fellowship hall. If you can't, come early. Be a part of Jenga. Be a part of a, um, a ping pong. We're going to have the cornholes all set up. All this stuff is important. So I don't know if you're catching what's going on, but as we look at this, did you see in the very beginning, did you notice what was happening? In the very beginning, Bob and I just kind of looked at it, grabbed it, and went on. No big deal. And the farther you get on and playing, what's going to happen? Now you've got to be more strategized, right? Did you notice that? Because that's the first thing I do. And I can tell that y'all played this before because you saw what Bob did earlier. He took a spot out and everyone in here were like, oh, no, don't do that. It worked. But why is it dangerous? Because later on in the game, what's going to happen? 
that's going to be a weak spot, right? It's most likely going to fall from that spot right there. All right, is that making sense? All right, so Tim, I'll ask you, since this is your term now, Susie doesn't make this fall, hopefully. Oh. Let me ask you a question, Tim. Do you, when you see this, I see rows that have one, I see rows that have two. Is there a strategy, do you prefer to try to make it one row, one block per row, to, so, so it does fall? Like, what, what's your, are, you, are you trying to keep the two and, and stronger go higher? What's your strategy? Probably to turn it back over to you about right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. All right, you do one last one and we'll take a break. Do one last one, one, last last one, one. and we'll, we'll, we'll take a break. Every time my daughter says one last time, you know what happens? Yeah, I'm a pastor. I know what that means. Yeah. <laughs> we got about 30 more minutes. <laughs> last block and we'll take a break. I will. I will. Which, which, which one do you think? A new row or... or? Is your caddy? <laughs> Try it. <laughs> My granddaughter taught me how to cheat at Jenga. <laughs> Just push him. <laughs> All right, we're good. You guys can see. Right, I appreciate you, it. Thank you. All right, so we're going to pray and dismiss now. Um, <laughs> So, so when, we, when we set up these games, I, I just want to encourage you. Again, this, this is more than just having fun. It, it's about relationships. So sometimes when we set up games, when we set up ping pong, when we set up cornhole, when we, when we, when we set up worship and, and the music is playing before, after service, when we set that stuff up, it's not just for, you know, just for you. It's for your relationship with others. Build the, build the relationship around you strengthen each other, have fun together. Is, does that make a sense? So it's, it's more than just Bob and Tim and I playing Jenga. It's about creating a relationship, about creating an experience that will last a lifetime. Is, is, are you with me? So feel free to play, play, play games. We're going to have that stuff set up. It's going to be a lot of fun in the fellowship hall, all that kind of stuff. So, so for now, we're going to kind of move forward, and we're going to kind of go to the next section, Okay. So at this moment right here, so, so as we play Jenga, you notice that the, the, the central part of this is to obviously win the game. Keep it standing, go as high as you can go. You want to win the game. One thing I did like is that the pieces that are not touching the other ones, see when you look at it and you can try to see the lights and going back and forth and looking through it, it looks like everything is symmetrical and everything is touching. Doesn't it? But you see, it's not. So there's stuff I can touch and move, and I just barely touch stuff, and I can feel when things are looser. So although it's barely touching, it's not really a core foundation to the Jenga itself. And so when I'm dealing with this Jenga in the very beginning, I don't really have to think much. I can just go, tap it, and off I go. I've literally taken pencils and played pool with this thing and popped the center of it real quick. I can't do that later on in the game. I guarantee you I'll lose. But in the very beginning, I've taken my finger and just wham, and it's fine. Now the whole thing might shift. We gotta straighten it up again. But it, in the beginning, you could, you could do a lot of stuff and be fine. Toward the middle part of it, it starts to get a little, ooh, careful. And you can tell everything is kind of Touching and not touching. Even though they look like they're touching, it looks like they're a part of it. When you push them, they are easily moved. Did you catch that? So I don't know if you can grab a hold of that, but that's preachable right there. All right, so here, here's the thing. Let me, let me get to someone to, um, or something to, to kind of deal with having fun 
and let's go to the verse. Ready? Let's start it out. So in Colossians chapter 3, if you have your Bibles, turn to Colossians chapter 3. As you turn there, this chapter is all about living. It's all about our life, a new life. It's all about living a new life, a living, you know, if anyone's in Christ, he's a new creation, 2 Corinthians tells us. The old is gone, the new has come. We're living in the new. This is a new life. This is chapter 3 of Colossians. Having fun, but the title today is Let's Make It Personal. Let's make it personal. So we're ready to read it. Colossians chapter 3, I'm reading from the New Living Translations. It says this, since you have been raised to new life with Christ, Set your sights on the realities of heaven, where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand. Now watch this, verse number two. Think about the things of heaven, not the things of earth. Can you see Jenga? Raised to new life with Christ, we are a part of God's kingdom. Did you see Jenga? But we are still living our lives. So when we look at this, when we look at this verse, when we look at this, See, there are things in our life that are pretty movable. They're not a foundation. They're a part of our life. There's nothing wrong with this, but it, it, it's not a foundation. They can be changed. But when we move a foundation, whoa, the whole thing's coming down. Is, is that making sense? All right, so verse number three. But if you died to this life, and your real life is hidden with Christ in God. And when Christ, who is your life, is revealed to the whole world, you will share in all his glory. So let's look at this uh, Jenga thing. So remember, when they, when they started, it was what? Pretty easy. You know, think about it. There's no strategy, really. Maybe a little bit of strategy. I know some uh, more experienced Jenga players, as soon as someone touched the first one, they're like, oh gosh, they don't know what they're doing. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm like feeling, all right, that one's loose, take it. That, that's how I do it. I've literally messed with one that I knew was really strong and was down there, but I knew if I take the other one out, it's going to be extremely weak. So I wanted to remove this one instead of this one. Does that make sense? So once I remove it, the whole thing will actually drop a little bit in weight and redistribute what's the foundation. But I knew if I did that, it would make it stronger. Does, does, that, does that make sense at all? All right, so, so a few moves into it, we start seeing that we're getting slower picking the pieces. We're strategizing better. You know, if I take that one, that's like two in a row, with one on each level. That's, that's dangerous. I, I, I don't want to do that. I want to set it up so, so we start strategizing. Does that, does that make sense? So, so towards the end, they become, we become extremely careful. Regretting moves. I don't know if you've ever done this. Have you ever played Jenga? And, and towards the end, you can tell it's going to be falling soon. And in your mind, you're like, I should not have moved that one piece. That was a bad idea. Do you, you ever do that? Well, I've done that one. You, you make a move, you make a decision to take this out, and you realize that's going to hurt me later. That's preachable right there. It was at that moment when we realized, <laughs> I screwed up. So here we are, life in the beginning, almost careless. We do what we want, when we want. There was really no, you know, what's the biggest thing that's going to happen when we're younger in life? We get put in the corner. No dessert for you. Like those are the decisions we kind of make. So if you become an adult, you start making better decisions, more impactful decisions. We start thinking about retirement. Uh, Pastor Kevin and I were actually uh, at lunch with his daughter the other day on Friday, and we were kind of talking about careers and jobs. And, and one thing we were just kind of letting her know is like, just, I know... It's fun to do this. What does that mean in retirement? How is this going to affect you in 30 years? Does, does that make sense? When you start making decisions in 30s, late 20s, 30 years old, you start realizing, man, I need to start like, preparing for retirement. What am I going to do here? That's Jenga. If I make this decision, how is that going to affect me in 15 decisions? 
right? It's important to understand that. How does this one move affect me later? Because it only not only affects me, it affects the people that are around me. See, if this falls over, game's over. Tim's not doing another one. Bob's not doing another one. It's over. So when you, when you live a life, when you, when you believe, when you've been told a lie that says, my, this is my life, I can do what I want to do, lie, because your life is just one of these. And everything you do affects the other person. Because when we come together, we're, we're, we're tight. And how I move and how I respond is going to affect someone else tomorrow, a week from now, a year from now. So when I deal with this, I'm like, how is this going to affect Bob? If I say this, this might hurt Bob, this might hurt Tim, but this is, this is going to make us stronger later on. All right, look, this is going to hurt. Tim, when I come here, this is going to hurt you. But I'm telling you, when I remove this, you're going to be stronger. So you become an adult, you start making better decisions, different decisions. Because this is going to affect us in the long run. So this is not really a fun message. So what is the fun? How do we have fun? How do we make it personal, if you will? Well, the first thing, the main thing is this. Get involved. Get involved. Now, obviously, that literally means physically. We need to get involved physically, meaning show up. And I'm not, I'm not just talking about church. There are people that come to church that are not showing up. Let me say that again, because that, that was really good. There are people that are showing up to church that are not here. They're checked out. But that also means the work. Have you met with someone that, uh, maybe a coworker that goes to work and they're not really there? There are people that come to family, family get-togethers. It's like, yeah, you, you might have been born in this family, but you're, like, not a part of it. Or how about, how about, how about the, you know, when we go to, when we not just go to church, not be part of the church, but some of us can't physically do that. So how do you also get involved? You can get involved financially. Missions, shoeboxes, you know, the... The shoe boxes that we sent out last year and this, the shoe boxes we're going to send out again this, next, this year, many of us aren't there. Most of us are not there to, like, give it to the kids. But you guys show up financially. You guys show up with material. You guys show up to help pack. You guys show up to do that stuff where that's showing up. Even though you don't take the box and give it to the kid, you're, like, a part of it. That's showing up. Awesome. Actually, I found out just recently that um, you know, we, we raise as much money as we can to, to pay for all this stuff, but there are donors that the shoebox is, is affiliated with that if they're short any money, they'll step up. It's showing up. You can show up by supporting, being an advisor, mentor role. I, I don't know if you caught some of the stuff that uh, Bob and Tim were doing, and, and I, I said, well, we, we looked at you. Which one should we grab? Because sometimes from your angle, you can see something I can't. And if you see something I, I, I don't, I'll hear it. Hey, hey, grab that one right here. Well, which one? This, this one? Yeah, touch that one. Oh, that's not a good one. What else do you see? You, you see what I'm saying? You're showing up by, my, by, by advising me. You, you, you hear, although you can't physically be here, you're helping me in an advisory role. That's showing up. What about being a part of a planning committee? Helping out with the schedule and doing this or that. Setting up uh, before and after church service stuff. How about background help? I don't know if you saw, but uh, did you see Lathan walk around with the camera? I didn't ask him to do that. 
I didn't tell Reuben to do that. I look, and Reuben instinctively said, I'm going to mentor someone to take my spot. That's what you want to do. So Lathan's in there going around, and then next Sunday's video that we post, a lot of it's going to be because of Lathan. That's cool stuff right there. So there's background help. There's camera. There's sound systems. There's, there's lyrics that, that, that's on the, that's on the uh, uh, TV screens. Tables need to be moved. Stages uh, they need to be rescheduled or, or set up. Uh, advertising. Social media. Our bracelets. Word of mouth. Whatever it might be. Uh, personally inviting others to church or an event. That's getting involved. That's, that's showing up, if you will. But I want to I dive deeper than just that. I want to I go a little bit deeper. In Colossians chapter 3, living the new life, it's a great section. I love this section. The entire section is really good. I'm not going to read it. I want to focus in on one verse. It's the last verse of this section. In verse number 17 of chapter 3, it says this, And whatever you do or say, do it as a representative of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. Earlier we read, set your sights on the realities of heaven. You remember that? That was in verse 1, 2, and 3, right? Set your sights on the realities of heaven. Think about the things of heaven, not the things of earth, right? We know that. Now, that doesn't mean don't listen to non-Christian music on the radio. That's not what it's saying. It doesn't mean only spend time with believers. If you spend time with only believers, guess what? Where's the evangelism? Go and make disciples of all nations. You know what? He wasn't talking to Pastor Kevin and Pastor Matt. He was talking to you and me. Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. That's what it says. It doesn't mean only spend time with believers. It doesn't say only wear Christian t-shirts. If your ch- shirt does not have a cross on it, then you're not of God. <laughs> Calm down, okay? It's not what it's saying. What about every conversation? Every conversation. Every... My- Michael Jr., have you ever heard of Michael Jr.? Michael Jr. Jr. calls it being oversaved. You ever heard of that, oversaved? Oversaved is simply someone that's just... You know, you've been in a conversation in the middle. I don't care what the conversation is about. Football, sports, TV, it doesn't matter. In the middle of a conversation, Lord, we just thank you for the game last night. Are we praying right now? What are we doing? I'm not, I'm not talking about that. Every conversation doesn't need to end in, thus saith the Lord, or amen. Like, have a good conversation with people. Talk about them. Not behind their backs, but talk with them doesn't have to end with praise God or hallelujah. That's not what the verse is saying. What it is saying, it says live your life. Every Jenga piece. If you can picture this, instead of just seeing a piece, try to see each block as a conversation. It's a hobby, a relationship, a person, an activity. It's great. I love steak. I love pancakes and bacon. That's a block here. Men's breakfast is a block here. Is it my foundation? Can it be moved around? Is, is that making sense? Some of us are so, this is my seat at church. This is where I sit. Nobody else could sit here. Okay, look, that becomes a foundation for you. That's no good. God loves it all. He loves your hobbies. He loves your likes. He, he designed you for that. There's nothing wrong with that. That's a part of your life, and he loves it. It's your foundation. See, Ecclesiastes tells us that, that, that the drinks and the food, all this stuff, that's, it's all well and good, but I, I'm, I'm so grateful for it because God created it for us to enjoy. It's a block. Our diet is a block. Ice cream is a block. It needs to be here. (laughs) Just be careful how many times you use it. Okay? So I'd like to do, Bob, if you wouldn't mind, if you can reset this to a normal, to normal Django stuff, Django stuff. Yeah. 
So just reset it to a normal Jenga. So have fun in life. Create memories. Make it personal. Don't just read or watch someone on social media having fun. <laughs> Drives me crazy. Why in the world my kids will watch someone play games with their siblings, the games they created, they will watch people online have fun and create games. They're watching other kids have fun. Here's a weird idea. Go have fun. I know that might sound foreign to them, but I tell them, shut the internet off, shut the TV off, and like you make the game up. You go have fun. Experience all that God has for us. But no matter what you're experiencing, make sure Colossians 3.7 is the cornerstone. It's the bedrock of what we do. That I'm a representative of who? The Lord Jesus Christ. That's who you represent. So as Bob puts that together... What I want to do is I just kind of want to look at this and ask, how am I, if you could ask this question for yourself, how am I representing him? Thanks, Bob. How am I representing him in this conversation? So when I look at this Jenga and I understand every piece here is a conversation. Every piece here is a job. Every piece here is a family member. Every piece here is Lowe's. It's Home Depot. It's Walmart. Does that make sense? Every piece here. Am I making sure that every conversation, every activity is touching each other so that my, my foundation in Christ is secure? Because it all blends together. That, when I, that when, I, when I take this block out, I understand that it's not just a block. It represents everything I am and everything God has given me. Is it still touching? Is it still part of it? So what's the deal now? What's the, uh, what's the real so what now? What? But going back to Jenga, what, what I'm saying about this, all these pieces, as I said before, each one represents a relationship, a family, a job, a hobby. But it also represents, listen now, it also represents my church life. It also represents the gossip I spread. When I talk about people behind their back, it also represents my prayer life. One of these blocks is my prayer life. Is it touching anything else? Can it be easily removed? One of these blocks is my daily time, my devotional, my daily time with God. One of these blocks is how I worship. Do I worship to impress you or do I worship to honor God? One of these blocks is how I listen to him. Now look, when I look at this, I look at this whole setup and I say, man, I look pretty strong. Everything's together. Everything's tight. Everything's connected. I look strong, don't I? I look like I'm a perfect example of Colossians 3.17. That everything I do or say, I do it as a representative of Christ. Everything I have, everything I do, I make sure God gives all the glory. It looks like that from the outside, doesn't it? Until what happens? Life happens and starts to push. How secure are you in this? How's your prayer life? And life happens and starts moving things around. And sometimes the devil or the demons or our family member or our mother-in-law. <laughs> come on now. What you doing that for? How about that one? You okay here? Oh. I see you're a little loose here. And so we remove it. And so when life happens, life happens and pressure comes. And someone comes and we think it's cheating. 
Life doesn't care about cheating. Life pushes you. What's not touching? What's not your foundation? Here's the scary part. So we have a foundation here. We have a foundation here. Here's the scary part. What if my prayer life was the loose one? See, it looks like it's a part, and it looks like it's strong, but it's loose. What if my, what if my foundational block in here is how other people feel about me? What if one of my foundational blocks here is how, how many likes I get on my social media post? That's more important to me than anything else. What if one of these things is about what shirt I should wear? And that's a foundation. But my prayer life, it's there. But it's not a foundation. That my shirt, my outfit, my social media post is not built on my foundation. And it should be. My prayer life, my, my, my Bible knowledge, how I spend time with God, that should be a foundational part. Every aspect of this, and it holds everything else up. The moment the devil comes, because if you don't think, you think it's a foundation, but it's not. It looks like a foundation. And really, when I see that, I can take this. So really, what you think is strong is really what? Weak. God forbid, what is this block? Is that my family? Is my family my foundation? Is there anything wrong with family? Mostly. But if it becomes my foundation, look, my family can be taken away from me. I could lose my family today. If that's my foundation, I'm in trouble. What's your foundation? Look, if you really want to have fun, you have the Bible, prayer life, your church life, you have these relationships, building each other up. You fight battles like this. You watch, have fun. I don't care what happens here. My foundation is secure in the Jesus Christ. That's my foundation. And let me tell you something. You might be lying to yourself because I know I have for years. I've lied to myself so many times thinking my foundation is secure until pressure came and someone came tapping. I don't know where you are. I don't know what pressure you have faced, but I'm telling you there's a real God and he wants to be your foundation. So when you face trials, when you face pressure of life, there is, there is something that you might not think it's a big deal now because it's the beginning. But in reality... That's when Pastor Kevin and I look at it, we're like, oh my gosh, that's going to hurt them later. And you don't even realize it because we see it from a different point of view. And we're like, you just threw out your prayer life. Is this making sense? So when we deal with this, when we face Jenga, every aspect of our life represents a block. That's not how we fight our battles. We fight our battles when the foundational block of our life is built on Jesus Christ. It's not on the church. It's not about where we sit. It's not about the car we drive or the clothes we wear. All that's important, it's part of our life. And God designed it like that. That's beautiful, it's wonderful. But if it's not built on foundation, if that thing right there on the bottom is our foundation, it's built on family, work, career, we're in trouble. Because pretty soon, pressure's coming. And whether you like it or not, it'll get pushed. Are you strong enough? Do you fight your battles well? Are you ready to have fun? When we built our stuff on a foundation of Christ, we're going to start having fun. Amen? Close your eyes with me as we pray. God, I pray that you would help each one of us. May we honor you. We lift our hearts, our ears, our, our minds as big and as wide as we know how that we receive you. May our foundation 
be on Jesus Christ. More than just the words of our mouth, that when we are receiving pressure, it will open the eyes of what needs to be fixed. God, we receive you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.